It's a little early to be making a statement like the one I'm making in the title of this video, and maybe, in some respect, I'm jinxing everything by talking about the team like this. I did actually get that comment. In the car vlog video two nights ago, talking about the Canucks and the St. Louis Blues, I was like, yeah, they're looking pretty good, and then they lost the next night, and I got some comments saying, hey, congrats, Lego, you jinxed it. And, um, okay, I'm not gonna say that I want to do that here. I'm just building off of the data that has been provided throughout the regular season so far. Today we are going over to Jay Fresh and his Twitter account, because what Jay Fresh did earlier this morning was tweet out a bunch of stats regarding the NHL and their team play. He talks about 5v5 goal shares, expected goals for, expected goals against, he goes over goaltending, and what I wanted to do was talk about my favorite team, that in which my voice is still rotten from yelling and screaming yesterday about the refs. I wanted to talk about my team and say, yep, they're legit. Here's why. So, let's go over to the first of the few posts made by Jay Fresh earlier this morning. The goal differential above expected for October 29th. Now, what exactly this means is, if you Google goal differential above expected, here is what Hockey Reference says. Expected goal differential indicates a team converting or stopping an inordinate amount of good chances compared to league average. This could indicate the team has great shooters, a prolific goalie, or just getting lucky. Essentially what you're doing here is calculating the team's expected goals against versus the team's goals for. That is what Sporting News goes out there and says in the link underneath. But Jay Fresh's chart says that the Vancouver Canucks have the highest goal differential above expected in the NHL, with a plus 14.4. Second in the NHL, you've got the Vegas Golden Knights, then you have the Wings, the Habs. All three of my favorite teams are in the top four. That's crazy. Now at the bottom, you have the Oilers, the Calgary Flames, Hurricanes, Capitals, teams that haven't really been too great with their defense, or teams that haven't had great goaltending, but Vancouver has been great at it all. In fact, they are number one in the NHL. This isn't even the only stat that goes out there and paints Vancouver in an amazing light. Let's go over onto the next chart here. Expected goals for percentage in Vancouver. The Canucks are 23rd, so yeah, they're not doing all too great over there. Their 5v5 goals expected is not really too high. It's in the second half of the NHL, in fact. But hey, that's one out of many. Let's go over to the next one. Expected goals for per 60. Yeah, okay, the Canucks are at a 2-5-1, which is 28th overall in the NHL. Their 5v5 offense has not really been the best, I'll admit that. A lot of their production comes on the power play. But their standing for expected goals against is a lot better. They're at a 2.69 at 5v5, expected GA per 60, so that is in the top half of the NHL. They're 12th overall in that respect. So with the numbers rounding themselves out, the Vancouver Canucks being at the top of the NHL in terms of goal differential above expected in all situations kind of indicates just how strong the Canucks power play and special teams have actually been. Add to this the shorthanded goals that they've been scoring too, and it makes a lot of sense to understand why their number is so high, even though their 5v5 numbers are relatively average to below average. Here is where things really go crazy, though, as team finishing is really in the Canucks' favor. This is the chart for goals scored above expected. What this means is every NHL team has a certain amount of goals that they quote-unquote should have scored based off of the quality of the chances they got in that game. Shot selection, shot speed, who's taking the shot, where that shot is on the ice— Etc. 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 Factors like that, right? If a player on the rush takes a 60 mile an hour wrister towards the goal from the blue line upon entering the zone, that's not really going to be an expected goal. Whereas a cross crease, 80 mile an hour pass, 80 mile an hour shot, one timer on the doorstep on the power play, that is an expected goal. So, when you talk about the chances that are calculated here, the Vancouver Canucks, in terms of their goals scored above expected number, are first in the league, tied with the Red Wings. 4.1 is their number here. In fact, only seven teams in the NHL have a positive goal scored above expected metric, meaning that they're actually scoring goals that the computer and the analytics say they shouldn't have been scoring. 
The Canucks have 4.1 more goals than they should have scored, which means that their finishing ability has just been so darn good that they're converting chances that shouldn't even really be goals. And you could say that, oh, it's a result of the teams they've played against, it's a result of the bad goaltending on the other side, whatever, whatever, whatever. But hey, they're first in the league. You gotta get lucky to be good, yes, but you also gotta be good to get lucky. And for Vancouver being first in the league in this metric just shows that their finishing ability has been above and beyond this season in particular. And that carries over into the team's goaltending, because if you look at goals saved above expected, so pretty much the opposite here. How many goals are teams analytically in the computer based off of the data and the shot quality, how many shots are teams allowing against them that should be goals but are being saved instead? And the Vancouver Canucks are third in the league. The Bruins and the Habs are one and two, or tied for one. 14.7 goals saved above expected. Vancouver, with their goaltending, is at 10.3, third in the NHL. And because of how the math works, you could see that there are six teams that have actually a negative to zero goal saved above expected, meaning that the Carolina Hurricanes down there with negative 6.7 are actually allowing more goals than they should be based off of the quality of the shots coming towards the net. They have 6.7 more goals scored against them than they should have. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Canucks, they have 10.3 goals saved that should have probably been goals based off of the analytics and the models here. It's because their goaltending has been so strong and that carries over into the goals saved above expected leaders. Thatcher Demko has saved 7.9 quality chances that should have been goals in this early season, making him fourth overall in the NHL. The only goaltenders who have been better than Demko in terms of this metric have been the Triple J Club, Jake Allen, Jeremy Swayman, Joseph Wall. All original six teams, and that's really interesting. But either way, Thatcher Demko has been great, and it's not even just Thatcher Demko. If you go down to that list we had looked at earlier, goals saved above expected, 10.3. That's not just Demko's number being tossed in there. That's also Casey DeSmith. So if you do 10.3 minus 7.9, you could understandably say that Casey DeSmith's goals saved above expected number is 2.4, which is great. The guy's played in a few games, and he is stopping quality chances. 2.4 of them should have been goals. That is how everything rounds out. So early on in this young season, the Vancouver Canucks are showing to all of us that they are absolutely legit, and that based off of some of the metrics, they are amongst the best in the NHL. Now, what they have to improve on is visible in these graphics as well. They need to improve their 5v5 play. Sure, it's not terrible that they're in the middle-ish territory of 5v5 expected goals for and expected goals against, but when it comes to goaltending and defense, when it comes to finishing and special teams, yeah, they've been all right. They've been more than all right. And it gets to a point here where, hey, the season, sure, you could say we're only like 10% of the way there, but what else can we do? I mean, look at these numbers and disregard them. What can we do on October 29th at the end of the first month of the regular season where we still have a bunch of games played, but we definitely don't have a small sample size anymore either? Like, this Canucks team has shown off throughout this entire year pretty much that they are a lot better and more cohesive as a unit than they've been in a long time. And that in itself is very inspiring for Canucks fans who have wanted to see this team go out there and actually be all right. In fact, I saw this comment also in the same Blues post-game video, not the post-game video from yesterday. That one was a lot more angry and a lot more... Uh, kind of funny, I guess, but um, in the post-game video against the Blues, one of the top comments said, hey, I feel like this is the first time since 2019-20 that the Canucks have actually been all right and that LEGO has covered an all right team. And I'm starting to feel the same way. This team, this is like the best team they've ever been in terms of when I've been covering them on YouTube, even the 2019-20 season, they were still a bubble team. They made the playoffs off a of technicality by winning their play-in round. They were still not that high up in the standings when that Edmonton bubble was going on. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks today and how they're actually legit. Again, the Canucks could go out there and have an absolute terrible November 
But that's not my intention to go out there and jinx things here, right? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Royal 99. And bye.